Welcome everybody back to the New Artist Spotlight podcast. I am Wilco Will. And I am Big OG, you know me, Origin Cross. And yo, it's good to be back in the seats. We got amazing guests today. So if you've ever tuned in before, you know what we're here to do. We're here to interview some of the best and brightest artists from the New Artist Spotlight family of playlists. They're plugged to some of the best indie music from around the world. Yes, great to see you again, man, and uh, great to be back here with two uh, fantastic <laughs> guests, as you said. They don't need any introduction. They have just released a brilliant collab called The Key, which we're going to be uh, listening to today and hearing about. So welcome to the show, uh, Michael from The Blindfold Experience and Charles Connolly. Hello. Hello. Thank you. It's How great are you to both? be back. It's good yeah, to see good. you guys. How about you, Charles? No, I'm all right. Yeah. How are you doing? You okay? Me? Yeah, is everybody um, okay? Yeah, we're all good. We're all good. We've chatted a little bit um, just before we uh, started recording um, X rated chats that will never be repeated. Um, but today, <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, I just want to say congratulations on um, the new tune. It's always really good uh, just to be able to release something. Um, and it is an epic tune as well. I've listened to it quite a lot of times already. Um, yeah, it's a masterpiece, to be honest. First time I listened to it, I was like, I'm not sure where this is going, though. Like, I couldn't really pick it up as a song. I was like, is this a song? But then I, as it went on, it kind of, it, it felt like a story to me. It felt like a whole sort of composition. It was almost like a, a mini musical in itself. Um, that's how I read it. Um, so, yeah, do you want to each tell us a little bit about um, how you view the song, your experience with it, um, just talk about, you know, whatever you want to tell us about it. It'd be interesting to hear. This is a song that I um, started writing on uh, more than a year ago, and it, it, it has evolved a lot. Um, from the beginning, it, it it was very, very, very slow uh, and um, sounded like Made You Tom, perhaps something like that. Uh, and then uh, I started to noodle on the acoustic, and, and it sort of evolved into uh, an acoustic song. And then, you know me, I, I, I usually do an acoustic version that is different from from the other version and the problem for me was uh, i couldn't really get it to work and, and it sounded too much like the acoustic version so um i wanted it to be different so i uh, asked charles uh, and when he accepted i told him he can get free hands and do change rearrange whatever to make it sound different and he did very much you're laughing now, Charles. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I mean, do you have a response? Like, what do you? My well, that is exactly how it was. Um, with one thing missed out, I was meant to just mix it first, um, as far as I knew. Um, and then Michael said, "Feel free to add anything, do anything you want with it." Um, but he gave it to me as a full piece. Um, it was like a full, fully fledged production with, and I loved it all. And there was no space for anything to, you know, if I added something, something else would have to go. So I just said, I don't know really what you want uh, from me, apart from mixing, because I don't think there's any space. And then he said, no, no, it's up to you. You can do what you want with it. Um, and I took it a bit literally. Um, and I gave him something that was uh, that had nothing of the original. I, I literally took out everything and started from scratch. So I just took the song. And uh, he, I think he was a bit, he wasn't expecting that. Uh, I'm not even sure if I intended to do that in the first place. But when I get stuck into something, I really sort of go full on. Um, so, yeah, and then gradually over time, put in, back in bits of his and then it ended up being about 50 50 and it was great yeah it, it was great and the first version it just blew me away uh because i i really wanted something different and when i do stuff it tends to be a little bit more uh rock orientated uh and i wanted something different for this one because i tried to write it a bit more like a pop song uh, and keep it short and so uh, when he when he returned the first uh draft uh I, I i loved it i loved it and and then it's actually started to bring back uh more of 
the original parts, but uh, I, I think you killed most of my parts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I? I don't know who did what. I don't. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you because if I if I had told you that I did this and that, then you wouldn't have removed them because you're such a nice guy. And uh, so I thought it was better just to let you have it. That is that is true. Actually, I probably would have done that, um, or would have been more sensitive with it. But because you said free reign, I thought right, and I I was quite brutal with it. I was sort of whole whole parts or whole uh, instruments. I just go nah. And then put in something or whatever. But I'm so pleased I put back all various stems, like the the guitars, the drums, and it was great. Because most of my stuff is my personal stuff is not rocky. I've done that in the past, but I, you know, you haven't heard any of my rocky stuff. Um, and it was so nice to be working with guitars and big fat drums again. Um, yeah. So yeah, they had to be there. That that's the that's that's the size of the song it's it's the guitars it's just that huge sound um but i just sort yeah, of the guitars filled around it with my stuff you know i love the um the flutes as well and the pipes like mm. halfway through as well like, and there's so many so many nice little um nice little bits in the guitars epic and yeah i think it's a it's two really good musicians that work together there in good harmony and uh, um you know having worked with you charles as well i don't think it would have worked the other way around like if you sent Michael one of your songs and he just chopped out mm. big parts and you'd be like, no, <laughs> you'd be so I wet could, into I it. I couldn't imagine doing what Michael did. I yeah, couldn't yeah. imagine being a producer it's a great way, like, giving to, it to it's, someone um, else. True collab, it's yeah, just... it's mad, man. I've, yeah. got, like, I've got some half-finished songs I can throw your way as well if you can turn them into masterpieces. Um, I can maybe do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm glad that you, you two have come together in another NAS collab. Yeah, another legendary piece of work, right? Like. Um, and just again, like how hard it is to come up with something and then just let somebody else add to it as like, let alone just like break it apart and, and, and rearrange it. Um, I think we talk about this a few times on the show, but uh, even just as like an artist, when you record it and then you send it out to somebody to do the mixing and mastering um, and then knowing that they could send something back that was not necessarily what you envisioned and then like the type of courage and trust that that takes to allow somebody else to impose their art onto yours, but then to just let somebody say, this is, this is what I've got here. Do whatever you want to do with it. Like that is, it's almost mental. Like, <laughs> Well, yeah, that I was, I was honored when first I was asked, but I was honored that um, I was just told, yeah, do whatever. I've got full trust in you. And I just thought, Christ, from a producer, that's with your own song. That That's a lot. That's amazing. I don't think I could do that. That's, that would feel weird to me. That's why it's cool. It's what kind of the blindfold experience is all about, isn't it, Michael? Like mm -hmm. taking just like you sort of just cut, paint a bit of a frame for people. And it's like, here's a song. But I want you on it. It's not my song. It's it's our song. I exactly. Love that, I, I tend to work a bit, bit like if I was in an actual band, I come with an idea and usually it's pretty complete. But when I send it out to different people, uh, and the guitarists or uh, uh, bass players, drummers, whatever, um, they I want them to 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 bring back bring their own into it. And at first, sometimes when I get things back, I think, oh, this wasn't what I expected exactly, but. After getting used to it, I often find that it's it's just much better, and and it, everyone brings their own piece, and and it grows together. So, how many hands were were in this song before it touched Charles? Yeah, um, actually, I, I've been working with this one for quite a while, and and I had a bit of problems finding the right singer. I tried several outs and and we all agreed that well didn't work for this one let's try another one uh so, so i went on and tried it tried another singer and a third singer and a fourth thing singer um and for different reasons uh we had to move on and, and then i asked charles and uh i was very pleased that he uh actually accepted to both Think, sing and produce it because he was just going to mix it from the start. But uh, let's see, there's there's an acoustic drummer, there is an excellent bass player who Charles removed completely. 
<laughs> but your base is great so, so it, it works so well with this version uh, uh, i'm playing some acoustic guitars uh they are still there somewhere and uh a friend of mine played electric clean guitars they are still there as well and then i had this italian um guitarist uh he, he, his parts are the most prominent, the ones that sound a bit Brian May and uh, uh, and amazing. Uh, how many um, how many lines was it, Charles? What are what, what they called? Stems. How many stems? Yeah, yeah. Um, the whole the whole project was one hundred and eight stems, <laughs> um, and it had oh, it was absurd. It had I think uh, was it twenty two vocal tracks about. 50, 12 or 15 guitar tracks, uh, two sets of flutes, two sets of violins, Chinese violins, cellos, uh, piccolos, uh, so a horn section, real drums, beats, uh, real bass, synth bass. That I've just everything except the choir, pretty much. I it's think. Not bad, man. And how many? How, <laughs> how long have you been working on it now? Like, how, when? When? How long has this song been around? And how long have you two been working on it together? Uh, well, I've I was working on it for about three weeks, um, but it was it's probably the most time because it wasn't three weeks on and off. It was solid three weeks, and it's yeah. probably the longest I've ever spent on any piece. Including all my own. I mean, anything. Yeah, you were, you were working really intensely, and, and um, you sent me drafts now and then again, and you told me not to listen to them too much, but I refused because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, them. Uh, and right up until the end, there was my tracking vocals, so so uh, sounded a bit off. But uh, I, I became really fond of them because I'd heard them about eight hundred times. Um, but I, I was sort of tempted to put them in there in the background or something. But then I changed a couple of notes and melodies and things. And I'm like, nah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It was never intended. Uh, but uh, as for time, I, I mean, about a year ago, last New Year, uh, I was finished with the first my version of it. Wow, um, was it that long ago? My God. And that's when we decided to change from the first thing to the next one, and then it kept moving on until it came to you. Mm. How many singers do you be, think you would have had to? Deep. How many do you would think you would have had to go through before you got to me or Origin? Well, uh, Origin, you don't know this, but uh, I already been in contact with Wilco asking if you and him wants to do a, a song with me. Um, was a bit of the wrong tempo for you, Wilco, but. Um, just so you know, if if you're interested, I, I, you're muted. I don't even think I remember that one. When, was that quite a long time ago? Or? Yeah, it was a while ago. Uh, and that one will actually be, Andres is working on it right now. And um, that, that's oh, nice. uh, completely different to phrase uh, Monty Python. But um, it's um, it's probably my, my most aggressive metal riff so far. And also mm -hmm. another rather prominent NAS, NAS person uh, has provided some keyboards and some lead guitars and uh, and it's going to be well something different so it sounds like uh Wilco must not have been offered a million pounds to get on the song so no. he didn't even no. take the opportunity to send it to me so uh I guess if he wouldn't get a million pounds I probably wouldn't get a million dollars so I don't know if he made the right decision or the wrong decision. We'll have to wait until the song comes out. Yeah, I, I think uh, with the, the currency, I, I think it would be better with a million dollars today. Yeah. million pounds. <laughs> um, so, uh, the upper hand. There's a, lot, there's a lot going on with the currency right now. Yeah. Recently, so I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not tracking it too close. I just know where we stand. We'll go might be rich or poor tomorrow we'll we'll never know but um so i always think it's interesting so you you, you wrote the song like the lyrics and everything like that you you put down the, the the demo vocals um i don't i don't know if it's different just because for like me as a rapper i don't even know if we'll go just the same way but like 
it would be hard for me to sing vocals or sing lyrics written by somebody else. Um, and I don't know if it's like a pride thing or 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 what. But what's your experience like with that? Like, um, are there ever artists that are like, oh, well, I like what you've written, but I want to change the words, or are they usually pretty much like, okay, this is this yeah, is the lyrics, right? I'll do it. time, right? Yeah. Uh, I I I would say that um, I think it's different with with the rap and rhymes because you all have such unique styles uh so so i think it would be hard perhaps for a rapper to write rhymes for another one I, i'm not sure but uh it, it, whenever i will co collaborate with with the first rapper uh i will definitely not write any rhymes i'll just leave space for it are we but, in negotiations uh, here by the way <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I didn't turn this into an actual. Unless we'll have to pitch. Cut that. <laughs> but yeah. but uh, Charles, um, you, you you wanted to change a few. I think you changed some notes to from from minor to major. I think you told me. Uh, uh, there were a few, yeah, there were a few notes I changed. Um, not words. I don't, did I change any words? I don't mm -hmm. think so. Oh, no, okay. I mean. That's the first time I've ever sung words that weren't mine. Um, but I was so used to hearing it, it almost felt like mine. You know, it was just, it was, uh, uh, but yeah, melody wise, I did. Um, you remember, I changed a few of the chords in the verse. Um, mm. And then I had to change the melody. And I think in my head, it happened the other way around that I changed the melody first. And then to sort of back that up um to sort of blend a bit better and then change the chords a bit um but yeah it, it just i i i think it was just to make it a little more different or interesting or something just to add another thing because i always add another thing that's always what i do <laughs> yeah I, I, actually you changed so so much uh there were all details, but there was so much that, that I, we agreed you should have, have a writing credits as well. Because, I mean, you did actually. Yeah, I mean, you you insisted that. I felt I felt a bit funny because I still feel like it's. I mean, if if it's not a hundred percent written by you, it's ninety percent or ninety five percent written by you. Producing wise, I'd say fifty fifty, but um. But uh, yeah, it's your song. It's absolutely your song. Uh, I recognize it. It's my song. But but you, you, the arrangement you, you made is is just spectacular. Yeah. And, and so many details. Uh, I can listen to it and, and I, I discover new small details. Depending on which speakers, I hear different things better. Uh, and there's just so many producer tricks going on. Uh, <laughs> Really, really cool. I, I think that that could be one one of the reasons why I do that. I'm um, subconsciously. I don't I purposely think I'm going to put this in for various people to pick up on that later on. But it's something that is these days with the thousands and thousands of songs that are coming out every single day. It's it, people will usually hear yours, but then that's it. They'll move on to another one. And if there is so much going on, um, not in a cluttered way, but you know. Um, then it's you're more likely to sort of press play again and then notice other little things and it's just it's more likely to be heard a few times uh, and not just be identical i like that it's good so in the interest of hearing it a few times um i'm just conscious we talked for 20 minutes now and we might not have even played it for some of these listeners so let's give it a spin and um uh would you both like to introduce it like together um in a sort in of sync. assembly style, yeah, in sync, yeah, be really. Um... <laughs> can do this. I see this working perfectly. <laughs> yeah, so I'll count you in. The one we have rehearsed with plumbing. Yeah, perhaps. yeah. I'll, uh, I'll count you in. Okay, three, two, one. I'm Charles, and I'm Michael from the Blindfold Experience, and this is the key.
Man, guys, thank you for letting us play that. Great song. Obviously, a lot of hard work going into it from, from both of you guys and everybody else that was that was a part of it. Um, but we're going to have to bring, bring the mood down a little bit because it's time for the new artist spotlight. Quick fire five. And you both are going to get hammered. So are you guys ready for this? Nope. Nope. <laughs> but I'll do it anyway. Yeah. Question number one. What is the key of the key? It's uh, D major. I'll take your word for it. I can't remember. <laughs> Question two. Which other song from the new artist spotlight playlists would you say is the key? <laughs> um. <laughs> it's I don't know. Question. Uh, but I would say um Alessia Ray. Is that her name? Razy. Yeah, yeah. I've been listening to her a lot lately. And and uh, mm. she she she's going somewhere. What are you guys' current favorite song on the playlist? My favorite at the moment is uh, on all those lizards. Um, uh, what is it called? <laughs> American Dream. Uh, it's one of my absolute favorite songs that I've heard it probably in the last year of anything, not just not just the spotlight, but everything. I absolutely adore that song. Yeah. I, I should have taken. I love that one. I should have taken that time to think about it, but but I can't think while you're talking, Charles. So I lost my. Uh... <laughs> I have that effect on people. <laughs> You've got five my... seconds left. Ah, Alessia Ray, see. <laughs> well done. <laughs> That's well doing. done. Okay. Uh, question four: Which uh, which band or artist from the new artist spotlight playlist would you most like to see live? Uh, Panem, for me. Ah, I'd also Panem. like to hear new music from them. I can't. I've been waiting for ages, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. Panem, what a good. Thank you. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> You're cheating, Mike. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, oh, I, crap. I get a feeling everyone else gets this question beforehand, and we don't. Is that true? No. 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 Okay. no. Question no, they're five. just better than we are. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's so devilish. I haven't slept well. <laughs> <laughs> Question number five. How many artists on the playlist do you think has the million pounds or the million dollars to get me or will go on a song? I don't think anyone does because we're all broke. Yeah, I don't think they would be here if they could. Mm, you make a good point. I don't know. I mean, especially with all that payola around, they'd just be spending millions on. Yeah. I mean, Brad got us on the phone. Mercury, Mercury Teardrop got us on the phone. Yeah, he's like, yeah. The well, he, he must have tons of money. Mm. I've got another question. I've got just a quick uh, follow up for, for Charles. Um, how was it Mike, working with Michael as compared to working with me? And uh, who was better? <laughs> <laughs> That, that cheeky little wink. Charles just, just ruined his life. You know, I've been so lucky with uh, with working with people. First, I did the remix uh, with Skinny Dippers, and Ryan was just fabulous. Then I worked with Wilco, fabulous. Then I worked with Michael, fabulous. I, I've been so lucky because I've heard about all these terrible times that people have had working with people, and it's just been a dream. It's just great. Yeah, oh, no, that didn't answer the question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was very political, but it didn't answer anything. Mm, you got that one on Tony Blair, I think. Um, <laughs> or, or any politician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'll stick with you. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go. Take it personally. Remember next um, time? Yeah. But there's only one this way. Is why, this, is, this is why he works with Andres and not and not Charles. Because mm. he knows Charles prefers Michael. <laughs> oh. Everyone does, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, and Michael, uh, yeah, do you want to uh, just tell us a little bit about how it was working with Charles as well? It must have been a great experience for you. Yeah, it, it was a great experience. I mean, I mean, Charles is brilliant. I love everything he did. Uh, and um, I mean, we've been chatting before, so so we kind of know each other. But actually, we did uh, this whole thing without talking once. And, and the first time we talked was uh, when we met Plummy a few days ago. So, so it's nice to talk to you as well, Charles. Uh, it's also the this is the first time we've actually spoken face to face. Still not face to face, but you know. But you know, uh, I must warn you, London isn't so far away from me. So, whenever I go there, I will ask you if I can buy you a pint, and I will hug you, and I will ask you as well, Willow. Willow, hello, Willow. Willow, yeah. <laughs> you know, take the, the way you said that sounded like a threat. <laughs> No, do it. Oh, I wanna, yeah, I love it. <laughs> you you would be uncomfortable. <laughs> you want to come up north, really. You don't want to go to London. It's a uh, it's not real England down there. So it's very expensive. You should come to Leeds, and and I'll drag Charles up here instead. I like that. That sounds good. <laughs> but uh, origin, you you got to meet um, Blues Trainer, right? Yeah, I did. Tell us about that, man. Was it good? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was good, man. We uh we we did a the San Antonio Heart Walk. Um, it was a five k five k walk. She came down from from Austin, and uh, we came in not last in that Heart Walk. So it was a real good experience. Um, one of my one of my managers from my company, uh, director for my department, he he spoke. He was one of the uh, I guess kind of key people in in trying to help do things uh yeah man we we raised a lot of money um we got some contrib- contributions from the water spotlight which is which is amazing um just the type of community we have right where people are willing to pitch in those very very small pay streams from spotify and and contribute to a good cause um we had a good time we talked we shared some Share some music, uh, some some artists we think are are laughable, and just uh, man, it was a good time, man. For real. had the baby there. She got the she got to meet the baby first person from North Spotlight to do that. She bought him a gift. Um, either when he was very new or right before he was born. So, uh, yeah, she's awesome. That is, that's amazing man that is amazing that's fabulous yeah, yeah. gotta love her honestly but um, yeah man it has been a really good conversation we're almost out of time so um i just want to say thank you guys for being here spending some time with us i want to thank everybody in the water spotlight community uh that is helping get us on radio and, and mixing our music and doing all the all the things to help us grow and reach new people um you guys got about 30 seconds each if you want to shout out your social medias. Yeah, um, social medias, all uh, Connolly Tunes at all, I think, all the social media. Um, uh, my website's uh, charlesconnollymusic.com. And that's it. That's everything. But uh, it's been a fantastic time. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's been great. And um, for me, it's the blindfold experience. Uh, at uh, everything except Twitter, which is the blindfold X one, and this is number one. There. Always Twitter. Oh well, yeah, it has been a real pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much. Great to see you all. So um, yeah, we'll see you all later. Yeah, thanks for having us. Oh, great! Peace out. See ya. New, new, new artist spotlight. Pod.